In the movie Pulp Fiction, Mia orders a $5 milkshake. And her buddy Vincent, he wants to know what this $5 milkshake tastes like because a milkshake from McDonald's in 1994 was gonna run you a buck fifty. This is a $5 milkshake. And here it is, bundled up nice and snug and traditional Magewell OEM pink. For $2.99, you get a capture card and a cable. I don't like using the word premium, so let's call this USB cable what it is. Weapons grade. This is the most overbuilt industrial USB cable I've ever laid my hands on. But that is nothing compared to this casing. This is just a half pound of metal. It's solid. No flex. None. This could easily survive a very malicious tap dancing session. And that is very good news for your HDMI and USB ports. Spec-wise, we have custom EDIDs, it can capture 1080p60, 720p 120, hardware support for cropping, deinterlacing, color, and frame rate conversion. Neat. Let's get it plugged in. And there we go. That's it. Drivers have been successfully installed because Linux is cool like that, but you're probably going to want the setup utility, so let's head over to the Magewell website and give that a download. We have a couple of options, in Ubuntu, CentOS, I'm on Debian 12, so let's give that one a save to our downloads folder. In a terminal, I'm going to decompress the archive using unzip. We get a EULA manual, and of course a Debian package. We can install the Debian package using apt, but you can only launch it using sudo, because reasons. And welcome to the capture utility, where you can do things like update the firmware. How crazy is that? Configure aspect ratios, color formats, hardware cropping, saturation, and deinterlacing, along with flip and mirror special effects. But how about a volume control for your incoming signal? It even has a mute button. Signal status for your audio and video, the ability to capture, import, and export EDIDs, because sometimes you need to force a video source to use a very specific resolution, or you might have a camera that's looking for something very specific in the EDID. This will let you sort it. And we have a couple advanced options for color, frame rate, and resolution. Now the resolution's really neat since you can pick and choose. By default, all resolutions are available, but using utility, we can limit it to a select few or only one. And you can store all of these configurations directly on the capture card. In OBS, we can add a video capture device. Let's give it a serviceable name. And look at that, it pops right up. And we have options for video format, resolution, frame rate, and color range. The major well works out of the box with Discord and other WebRTC applications like Jitsi and Zoom, and the six or seven of you still forced to use Skype. UEFI, BIOS, and boot screens can throw capture cards for a loop due to the funky signals, something I always like to test for. And as expected, no problems with a mage well. The mage well pops right up in Pavu control, gives us an option for digital stereo input, and we can see that it's working by checking the input tab. And here we have the mage well piping audio into OBS using the Jackstone server, just because I can. 84 milliseconds. That's the amount of time it takes to send desktop capture to the Magewell, encode it, and display the image in OBS. Time for some big buck bunny for you lovely pixel peepers. We have the Magewell, we have the Decklink Quad 4K, and of course the XR1 Lite. Now squint, because it's 2024 and we're splitting hairs. The Magewell is a little sharper than the XR1 Lite, but not quite as sharp as the Blackmagic Quad. And the default color and contrast, they look good, unlike the XR1 that likes to oversaturate things while adding a bit of bonus yellow to the image. At the end of the day, is the Magewell USB capture HDMI Gen 2 really a $5 milkshake? Let me tell you what it is. This is the result of telling engineers to make a pro-grade USB capture card without worrying about price. Now, I glossed over the configuration utility, but that's really the coolest thing about this card. Having a standalone device that can crop, lock resolutions, mute audio, and adjust EDIDs is absolutely worth every penny to the right person, especially when you factor in the build quality. This thing was designed to handle life in a production environment. You can step on it, you can kick it, you can bounce it off walls. It's just gonna look at you and giggle. So yes, the Magewell USB Capture HDMI Gen 2 is a horrible product name like every product name for Magewell, but it is most certainly, positively, absolutely, 
a $5 milkshake, even if you're on a McDonald's budget, because they go for around $60 used on eBay. Links in the description. And while you're down there, check out interfacinglinux.com. And if you have any questions about your Linux setup, feel free to ask them in our forums. But most importantly, get out there and make something awesome.